All right. So are you out there filming content as a real estate professional and looking for new specific ways to be able to get yourself out there, show your true authentic self and I don't know, not be so scripted? Well, today we have a really special guest, someone that's going to be with us all the way from Florida. We're real broker. She's absolutely crushing it. I think I sent a message to her. I don't know how long back, but finally we got her on the show, Real Estate vs. Technology. We have the one and only Nicole. Welcome to Real Estate vs. Technology. Excited to have you on today. I love that backdrop thank you so much very on brand it's good to be here i think appreciate you having me on today of course and it's awesome too like the, the blue is in the house today i'm feeling the blue vibes yes yes you are such a vibe and i feel like this is going to be a really fun conversation uh, you're, you're too kind you're too kind I, I really appreciate that so let's get into a little bit of your story and of course they can follow you check out your instagram links are going to be all down below but like why real estate? Like getting to where you're at now, you have this amazing team, you're crushing it. Like how, how did well, those you. Flattery will get you everywhere. Um, <laughs> you know, I've always been in sales and business development and marketing, and mm -hmm. I've gone through the corporate world. And at some point I just knew I needed to have my own business, my own thing. I didn't want to work for yeah. the man anymore. wanted to work for the woman, myself. And so- Real estate was kind of just, um, we, my husband and I moved a lot. We bought and sold homes every okay. couple of years. So at some point we were like, one of us just needs to get our license. And so we have to, so we stopped paying realtors. And so I got my license while I was on maternity leave and we were in the process of selling and purchasing. So I okay. basically was able to get my first two transactions under my belt um, with using myself as the test dummy. And I learned a lot through that. Um, but I think just having a background of business development and sales, um, it was just a natural fit. And I just yeah. I love everything about um, helping people find and sell and the entire process and system, everything between. So it's been a really yeah. fun transition. Let's go. I love that. And there, I've been seeing too over the years of filming just amazing individuals, real estate for technology. It's that the, the SOPs, the KPIs, when individuals come from a corporate background, sales, marketing, and what have you, it makes a, a tremendous difference compared to just, you know, People get in the business, unfortunately, and that's why we want to have individuals like you on the show, because you understand systems and processes and you're very much calculated with what you post and what you put online. So I highly recommend you got to go follow her right now. I have her Instagram right here because because I see what you're doing and you're smart about it and you're really from the behind the scenes with some of the some of the photo the photo shoots that you're doing to yeah. the way you're navigating your listings and so I, I really have to say like hats off to you for, for going oh. down that road and doing that and now you have a team that you've grown as well so did you was this already met premeditated did you plan on having I, a team and doing all this yeah no great question um i i knew for me i wanted to run this as a business not just like a side hustle or a hobby like i wanted mm -hmm. to figure out how can i become a realtor, but then also systemize it and, and make it something where I can eventually step back from actually producing, but I can work on my business and not in it. So I think that's a goal for a lot of entrepreneurs who start teams. Um, and I've, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot and I've made a ton of mistakes, I continue to make <laughs> mistakes, but I keep learning from them. So um, I'm always happy to, to share the good, bad, and the ugly because I've I've been through the ugly quite a bit, but I guess now I have, I have a small to medium sized team of agents here in the Jupiter area. Um, and so, and that's actually become a passion of mine is, is helping agents learn, um, mentor them, be a sponsor, be a coach for them in a lot of ways and helping them work towards their own goals too. So I'm still in personally in production. I'm still working with clients and I love that. And I love the marketing aspect. The team yeah. has been another pillar in my business. I love that. I love that. So for viewers, and listeners out there, you're talking a little bit about on the business, working on the business, in the business, and eventually being able to kind of take a back seat, right? And then have the business kind of run itself. Now, mm -hmm. are you already kind of there? Are you always going to transact? Like, how does that look for someone who wants to get to that level and is like maybe a single agent They're by themselves? They're like ah, banging their head against the wall, just trying to get consistent deal flow. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah, I think consistency is key. I think that's probably what most realtors strive for is like, I just want a deal a month. That would make me so happy. And then you want yeah. two deals a month and then four deals a month. And you're like, 
I want 10 deals a month. So it's, you continue to move your metrics of success as you grow in your business. Um, but that kind of goes back to like the, the, the challenges I've had is, you know, I think a lot of agents think the first hire they need to make is another buyer agent or another outside sales yeah. agent. When really the, what I've learned and what I would share with anyone is building your core infrastructure. So having the admin, having your TC, having your marketing team, having your staff, because, okay. and maybe you have an, a, a licensed assistant to help you with showings or inspections and yeah. like the day-to-day -day stuff, but people hire you because they know, like, and trust you. So it's really hard to build a team and a business of agents who um, you don't have that basic infrastructure for them to plug mm -hmm. into because they're hiring a system and a process. So unless they're the right fit into your existing system and process, it's really hard because clients or expectations are you and your brand. So you have to have the right people on your team. So as I would say, before you start hiring other agents, because um, you have all these leads, no, you figure a way to take off the plate of the day-to-day -day stuff that is not the money-making activities for you. And then you focus on being in production and being the main point of contact, knowing that you have you know staff supporting you. I love that. It makes a whole lot of sense. And I feel like a lot of individuals, as much as like, like you said earlier, like I want to, I want to be the man. I want to be the woman. I want to do my own thing. A lot of these agents don't really understand that there's so much complexity. So someone like yourself to build the SOPs and the KPIs and think about the income producing activities, you can bring in the agents, help them, serve them, support them for someone. Maybe that's not as focused. And yeah. so what does it look like for you as far as what are the activities that you love to do and the activities that you don't love to do? Gosh, if I could just do video marketing every single day, that would be my happy place. Like I truly genuinely love doing it. I have to figure out a way how to monetize it because it's <laughs> my passion and I love it. Um, but do I, I love marketing properties and I love building a brand. So um, that's definitely like all day, every day I would do that. Next to that is definitely training, mentoring, coaching. Um, I love giving back. I love working with people who want to grow because I'm a very growth minded mm -hmm. person. Um, yeah. I constantly are trying to find a way to improve and and scale. So it's it's aligning with those type of people who have the same goals in mind and then just helping guide them a little bit and just being there to support them. I could see based off your social media and your videos, you really love doing that portion of it. And it's interesting how our industry has shifted from how things were traditionally with print media, billboards, knocking on doors, you know, Fizbo's making phone calls to now being able to be a celebrity and to have this fan celebrity type relationship. And it's uh, it's funny how you said about monetizing. And um, it looks like, are we frozen here? Let's see. I can still see and hear you. Uh, um, your screen's a little frozen, but I could hear everything you're saying. All right, good old uh, StreamYard is how it works. When you want it to work, it. Uh, speaking of real estate versus technology, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, the good thing is, it's still I can still hear you, but you're a little frozen on your screen. So hopefully, I don't have an awkward, weird face that I'm frozen on. Your sound disappeared on me, though. Let me make sure. Can you hear me at all? Oh no. Hmm.
Resetting, resetting. I think it's just the um, my wireless router. I'm gonna have to buy a new one. It's like you buy the top of the line one, and then it's um, been kind of spotty lately. So here we go. Looks like it's coming back on, and let's see you here in a second. All right, we're back. Okay, good. <laughs> Holy, no one knows. No one knows besides us, but uh, that was interesting. The whole Google browser. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> but uh, good to have you back and talk about technology because, you know, it's always nice to be on the phone kind of multitasking in between all the things. But so when you, I wanted to touch on monetizing because what I'm seeing agents doing right now, and we've had a lot of guests on from Levi Lassick living in Dallas, Texas, um, to Adam Hancock, who has a Florida location guide, uh, to yeah. the guys in Hawaii, the core team, um, is I'm seeing them on YouTube. And these individuals are getting on YouTube and monetizing based off of showing their area and doing long form content. So is that something that you're thinking about getting into? Totally. Yeah. I actually had a great mastermind call yesterday with you know, a couple other colleagues in real and they're crushing on YouTube. So I've yes. I found, like short form and long form are totally two different animals. So um, I really wanted to dial in my short form content mm -hmm. before jumping into long form because I think it is a little bit more involved. It's just time. Yes the effort, all of those things. So I wanted to learn what I could on the short form first and then jump in. But this year is my year to really focus on YouTube and figuring out how to get, generate some inbound calls from that because I've been doing it for a bit, but my my phone is not ringing like my friends. So I need I got to like step up my game somehow. <laughs> It's like, what's going on here? What's going on? We actually yeah. had uh, Sharon on the podcast, which is yeah. awesome. 
over at Real. He's amazing. And um, yeah, it's interesting how, you know, my wife and I, what we did too, we come from California, from the Bay Area, moving over here next to Scottsdale in Gilbert, Arizona, just yeah. going on to your phone or going on YouTube and some guy on his phone was just sharing the area. It's like so many individuals, I, I don't want to fly out. I don't want to have to get a hotel. I don't want to have to take that time. I just wanted my leisure time to like look up and explore areas. And I think Florida, where you're at, is an awesome location, just like Texas. Uh, yeah. I want to say Adam Hancock, he was on the show. He has the Florida location guy from 2019 to now, $300 million in business, zero ad spend. Built his whole thing off of it. It's crazy. I know. I got to figure this out. This is, <laughs> I'm telling you, I got to figure this part out. Cause it's, cause yeah. it's like we do as realtors, we do it all day, every day, right? We're, we're out yeah. viewing the communities. We're exploring new restaurants and shops and all this stuff. So it's like, just video it, put the freaking camera, leave it running, put it, yes. right on, and just go. Cause it's, it's raw, it's natural to genuine. So, um, I just, I gotta, I gotta get my That's shit together. That's where I that's where I absolutely love stories. Uh, yeah. I'm a story freaking just all the time putting out content on stories because yeah. then it shows the real element of who you are as a human being yeah. outside of a podcast or marketing agency or whatever. It's like, hey, like here I am, here's my wife, yeah. here's my child, it's not scripted, out. it's not edited, yeah. there's no filter, it's me, what I do, and you get like a behind the scenes like feel about people. And that's also what creates that parasocial relationship with people, right? Yes. When you finally do connect with them, they're like, I feel like I've known you forever. And mm. meanwhile, you've never met them. You don't might not even know their name. You just know their username. Like I love cats. And it's like, oh, you're the I love cats person, you know, but yeah. you've been connecting and, and engaging with them for years. And there's that relationship already built. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's what it is with the short form as well. People yeah. see you, they know you, they like you. And then they form this kind of relationship like you're a celebrity and they're a fan yeah. of yours. And then it's like a no brainer. And I feel like that's where we're headed because the day in the age, I feel like the Zillow, no, no, you know, whatever Zillow is what it is or realtor.com and paying for leads. But it's just like you still need to nurture them and talk to them and go through that process. It's so true. Someone just already knowing you, liking you, and trusting you, and that's it. That's just it. Yeah. So let's get into some Brax tech. So you're mas mastering short form content. You're putting out a lot of really cool stuff. Like, is this like a content schedule calendar for the whole year? Is some stuff on the fly? Like, let's give our viewers and listeners some things that they can uh, practically apply to their business, and some things that maybe they can do themselves. Cool. So um, starting out, there was not much strategy behind it. It was just mm -hmm. you know I winged it. Um, but now I definitely have more systems and strategies. So I, I do have a marketing team now, but even if you don't have one, it really comes down to scheduling out. Like I'm a, I'm a big, I'm disciplined in the way I, I strategize and routine and organize my thoughts. So before yeah. I even turn a camera on, I know exactly what my hook is. I know what I'm going to say. I know the topic and I kind of time block my days of the week. So Wednesdays and Fridays are my marketing days. Wednesdays are usually like my brain dump of all, like actually this morning, like had brain dump ideas of like, these are all ideas and hooks. And it's just an ongoing list. I'm formulating what I'm going to do so that I'm efficient on my Friday shoot, because like, especially if you have, I have a videographer and editor, so like money, time is money. So like, if yeah. I'm there trying to think and fumbling around what I'm going to say, like what a waste of my time and her time. So everything's pre-planned. Um, and then, yeah, like we kind of create what our marketing is going to be for the week. We'll go out in a month in advance, but we definitely batch yeah. content so that we'll create, you know, 25 reels in two hours. And we have that yeah. last for like a month or two. Right. Yeah. Um, but like certain things that I've learned too, and this, this happened just last night. Um, we created some stuff. We kind of forgot it. it was sitting in our library of things to post and it had like the hook was a sound and it was a very popular trending sound. Well, it's no longer trending. It was trending last month. It's not trending. Uh -huh. today. So it's just not going to perform the way it, it, it would have if we posted it. So it's just good to be aware of like if you're doing things to tap into a certain sound or theme or trend or filter, you got to like kind of prioritize those things when you post it. Um, yeah. and otherwise you can kind of, you know, uh, calendar out and, and timeline out the rest of the content if it's not time sensitive. Yeah, 100%. I, I see that a lot too. It's like if you don't do some of the things on the trending side, you almost have to do rep them in there. It has to be yeah. within a couple of days or you're just yeah. going to lose. True. Right? Like you that, definitely had things go viral only because yeah. the sound was like on fire that day. And had mm -hmm. I posted it the next day, it just it just wouldn't have performed the same way. So that's yeah. important to know. But like I, I've, I've learned, and this is actually something I learned from Sharon and his creative, which is like mm -hmm. really focusing on the hook first 
and you can hook them visually through like a cool thumbnail. You can hook them through audio, which is like a sound or a trending uh, like over like voiceover, or you yep. can hook them with like the actual words that you're saying, like the first like you know three to five words, what those catchphrase or the punchline is. That. So kind of like coming up with the hook first, and then everything else following has been like the upgrade that I've made over the years. That's huge. That's huge. So. Viewers and listeners, take some notes, calculate your thoughts, write them down before you hire someone to start filming content. And it's so true too, the hook, Nicole, is huge because I think a lot of individuals from previous time, and you see it from time to time, hi, I am with, you know, yeah. and no one really cares. No one know? cares. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. Okay. It's an immediate scroll. Like it's, it's yes. a, like, stop saying all of that and just get to the point because we know we're all like, you know, goldfish. We have one second you know, attention span. So if you don't get to the point really fast, scroll, like no one's listening. Yeah, one hundred percent, and that's where that's where I feel like you know, long form or short form, you still need to have the thumbnails, the catchy hook, yeah. and then you have to tell them what you're going to tell them within the video. So by the time that they're at the end of the video, then they're going to get all the information, and that's where I feel like the long form really, really flat, like is where it thrives the most. Is you have yeah. to say, you know, stay into the end because yes. I have for you for free or totally. is this whole point's going to make sense if, if you don't and that's where like youtube is like you got like the three first three to five seconds and if they get past the first five to eight seconds watching a long form then they'll watch the whole thing yes hopefully. um and that's where like it's a whole different world Getting yeah I, I think too even with youtube because like my kids will watch youtube and the only thing the only channels i let them watch is my channel and mr beast because me uh, mr. Beast is a freaking genius right and I pay such attention to his thumbnails. So like it has to be market message match. If the yes. thumbnail, like the clickbait shit, I hate that. Like if if I type something up and you're yeah. gonna talk about like the top five most expensive homes in the world, you number one, within two seconds, it better be a picture of a house that's like, you know, astronomical in price. If you start talking yes. about cars and art and all this like stuff, you lose me. So it has to be so quick. And I kind of watch my kids and their attention span, like they'll click on a pretty thumbnail and if it doesn't pop in the first couple of seconds, they just click to the next video. So if the yep. kids are doing it, adults are doing it too. And they're just really good test beds to, to see I how. Like that. Yeah. Use your kids. Use your kids. <laughs> Check out how long they, how long, what do they click on? What do they yeah. do? And that's a really good tip, but too, Mr. Beast. And also I have a channel as well, Tuesdays and Thursdays, plug for Lip.com. Well, I will here. add you to my my list of, of approved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you. But uh, yeah, my daughter, she watches so many random things. Some of the things it's like, what are you learning? Where did you learn that from? I watched the yeah. video. And it's like, we get so busy as parents. There's a whole nother, whole nother uh, podcast yeah. in itself, right? Totally. But it's just like, yeah, what are you watching? Why are you watching? What's going on? The stuff they feed, oh man, online is ridiculous. Yeah. But um, Got to be a lot careful. Yes, you do. I love we that. I love that. We have stocked up on this on Prime and like Mr. Beast bars. So, like it's, but isn't it amazing how ama how incredible his content, his hook, his thumbnail, everything he delivers. I mean, he has a whole production, but he'll be in the middle of talking about his video, and then he's like, "Don't forget, Mr. Beast candy bars, like random shit." And what happens? Random People shit. go and buy a crap ton of chocolate bars they didn't yes. even think they knew or wanted, but. Chocolate, all that stuff is absolutely amazing. He actually, uh, Elon Musk was tweeting with Mr. Beast in regards to Mr. Beast posting a video on to X, and he was like, "This isn't going to make any sense. Like, I, I spent a million dollars per video. I can't post on X and make nothing." So yeah. apparently, two hundred sixty-five, uh, two hundred sixty-five thousand, they paid Mr. Beast to post his first video on X. So I don't know what they're trying to do over there and what's happening with that process, but we'll see. Is X trying yeah. to? YouTube, I don't know, but they're definitely working on trying to get Mr. Beast to start because you gotta you gotta have a leader, right? He's a great leader. It's to, all, to and it's all about collaboration, right? To be able to yes. tap into multiple different networks and groups and audiences. Like your people are not my people, my people are not yours. But if we can cross pollinate, we're be, we're able to like really engage with so many more people. So that's the whole idea. And at their levels, gosh, like Elon and Mr. Beast, that's like billions of people who like are following them it's amazing so that's like change of the world kind of conversations right there
It is. It is. It's absolutely amazing. And that's where I feel like real estate, we're going to see what's going to happen here. It's real lifetime happening. But if 90% of the business is done by the top 10% of real estate professionals, and now this content creation game is coming up, a lot of the people have been in the business for 30 years that aren't those people doing content like Nicole is, we're going to see a big shift. And then with YouTube and people just wanting to search and get education on an area or specific that they, they, they want, we're going to see a total different playing field here in the next couple of years. I'm Absolutely. really excited. I think you're part of the individuals who are going to be the trend center who's, who's leading by example. And so, so I'm just, yeah, I'm excited for you. Thank you. I am too. I think it's going to be good. I think it's the cream rises to the top. You have to, in, you have to either innovate and continue to leveling up or you're going to get lost in, in the masses. So I think that that's the way for the future. <laughs> 100%. So what I want to do is I want to get you back on because we had some technical difficulties. We didn't get our full 30 minutes in and there's so much more we can deep dive into. Plus, if you get into the long form, I would love to be able to share with the yes. viewers and listeners how you transition from, you know, go follow Nicole. Links are down below. Check out what she's currently doing. Go get some inspiration. She's our true authentic self crushing it online. And the way she is here is the way she is online, the way she is probably in person, I can imagine. And yeah, so, absolutely. yeah. Go follow her. Go check her out. We got to get you back on for the long form on and and what happens with that process, as you really? know. That I would love but that. End, we want to add value. So, so what do you want our viewers and listeners to take as we end today's episode in the arena of filming content, growing the real estate business? Is there something that comes out for you right now that you want to, uh, you know, just go ahead and give yeah. those listeners? Yeah, I would just say for for people who are still not like embracing video, you just got to do it. So whether you're, you know, don't like being vulnerable or camera shy or whatever it is, just start somewhere, start doing videos without you even being in the video, just video a property, video a neighborhood, a cool restaurant, whatever it is, but just start creating and building that muscle memory. And for people who have been creating, but maybe their videos are not performing the way they want them to. Um, I have a great presentation that I'm happy to share with you. Like if they DM me or read, like Instagram is my main platform that I communicate on. So if anyone wants to, I'm happy to share some tips and tricks on like how to use what you have now and just upgrade it a little bit. And there's ways that we rework, repackage and re-edit the existing content. So all the stuff that you've archived and saved over the years, I'm willing to bet you have a couple of gems in there that we can just give a facelift to, and then you can repost it. And I bet you'll see a lot more engagement and better productive. Just giving and serving and showing up. Links down below. Go follow yeah. Nicole, her Instagram link. You can see her content. Send her that direct DM and message to get that additional information, um, as is our intention for everyone to, you know, apply the things they learn here in Real Estate First Technology, have more success with their business. Nicole, this was a lot of fun. I really do appreciate your time today. We're going to get you back on so we can go deeper into the transition to long form and, and keep rocking and rolling. We really appreciate oh. you being on today. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. And to all our viewers and listeners, it is our intention for taking things for episode of Apply Your Business have more massive success. So uh, rewatch this. Go follow Nicole. Thanks, mm -hmm. Liftoff Asian, for sponsoring the show. If you already done so, like, subscribe, notification bell. Weeks every week on Friday, 3.30 Pacific Standard Time, we have new episodes come alive. And we'll see you all on the next one. Thank you.